Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, I absolutely love my Toyota 4Runner Limited, and most recently I talked about why this thing is the best built car in the world. In fact, it's built in the legendary Toyota Tahara factory near Nagoya. And you guys absolutely love that video, and you asked more of that type of video. So what I'm going to do today is to do part two of why the 4Runner is the best built car in the world, and tell you more things about this vehicle that you might not know. So let's get right into it. Welcome back. So basically, I'm going to point out a bunch of things they probably didn't know about the 4Runner, which will further emphasize the fact that this thing is absolutely the best built car in the world. Now, if you haven't seen my part one of this video, please go take a look at that first, where I point a whole bunch of things about the car and come back and watch this one after that. So I'm going to talk about, first of all, the body quality and the body strength, uh, which I mentioned uh, a number of times in the first video. But this time I'm going to show you a little bit more details. So for example, unlike most modern SUVs or most modern cars out there, almost every panel and components of the 4Runner is still steel. Now it's a mixed steel, not pure steel, because they do mixing a whole bunch of different materials to make it stronger. But what I want to point out is something interesting, and that is that these panels are not the same as the modern vehicles because they're still super thick. You can actually see the thickness of metal by looking at the edge over here, and it's about 10 to maybe 12% thicker than the modern vehicle. Uh, and also, this is still steel compared to most vehicles that are aluminum. Now, there's lots of advantage in having aluminum components and parts because they're lighter and, uh, and perhaps they're a little bit easier to manufacture in some way. But in terms of uh, robustness, strength and ruggedness, there's nothing that can beat an actual steel panel. So even though this is an older design and it's heavier because it's steel panels, obviously it does feel a little bit better in terms of being on the rough road and also on the rugged road, just because the steel has a, a better strength to weight ratio. Also, if you look carefully, you'll see that uh, these things are basically turned this way. So you have an outer panel, the inner panel, and then the outer panel is actually bent like this. And then we spot weld all along here. Now you cannot see the spot weld because after it's welded, then they apply a special sealant to seal the whole thing off. And that's what you're seeing here. Uh, but what I wanted to show you compared to some other vehicle is that the spot welding in terms of the number of spot welds over here is a little bit more on the 4Runner than modern SUVs because once again, the less things that you do, uh, the less cost it is. So they're all trying to reduce cost in every way possible by making the material lighter, simpler, and then to have less manufacturing process. So this one, which is a decade or more older now in terms of design, as using older technique at the time when they weren't as concerned about the cost and efficiency. So there's a lot more spot welding. So between here and here, for example, there'll be about 10 spot weld. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine, let's say. Whereas in the modern car, you might only find five or six, just enough to meet the stringent crash worthiness. But in old days, we always had redundant spot welding just to make sure that we never ever fail any kind of crash testing. So between here and let's say here, there'll be at least 20 spot welds, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, compared to, let's say a newer model that might only have 10. So maybe uh, 10 to 12% more spot weld, perhaps even 20% more. And therefore the entire hood just feels much stronger and very rigid. Now, in case you're wondering why I would know this, well, because I'm a body engineer and I actually built the equipment that manufactured all these panels and also to put them together. So I'm the guy who designed the robotics and the process that actually spot welded this. And I'm also the same guy who will check for quality control and check for rigidity and strength of these panels after the fact. So this is my area of expertise. And I can tell you once again, nothing replaces thick metal pieces that's been welded tough. That's the first thing I want to show you. Now, in case you're wondering why this is matte paint here, it's because it's missing a clear coat and that's obviously save money. They don't clear coat anything that's uh, internal to the, um, to the body uh, because we don't really see it. And obviously we're not expecting that to be clear coated. Looking into engine compartment, something that's really interesting is that this is, uh, of course, the four liter uh, V6 engine, very proven. It's been around for a long, long time and most likely it's going away because the sixth generation 4Runner will likely go to a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. And I know most of you guys are very upset about that, but let's park that for a moment because I just want to focus on this fifth gen 4Runner. 
Uh, but something interesting to note is that in the new Land Cruiser 300 series that just came out about a year ago, they actually kept the 4-liter V6 engine for some areas of the world, not in Japan. In Japan, they moved to the 3.4-liter twin-turbo V6. But for Land Cruiser 300 series that are sold somewhere else outside Japan, they actually are offering both the 4-liter um, V6 as well as a new turbocharged diesel engine for that matter. So you know that this engine has to be good in terms of reliability, in terms of um, manufacturability because Toyota kept it for the new generation 300 series for Land Cruiser. Anyway, coming back to here, uh, what else do you notice? Well, first of all, this engine is proven, reliable, and if you talk to anyone, such as Ahmed from Car Care Not, they'll tell you that this thing has been uh, so well designed and so well engineered and manufactured that it could last easily a million miles if you take care of it. But you also see many other telltale signs that something is a bit different about the way they manufacture the 4Runner so if you look at these things, you'll see some yellow paint here. Uh, you'll see a lot of paint, you know, another yellow paint here, which is hard to see. In fact, if you're able to open this cover, you'll see more paint dab. And what they do is that whenever they tighten or um, install or manufacture something, the, uh, the actual operator will put a dab of paint to indicate that they not only installed it correctly, but they have finished checking it to make sure that it was done to the spec. You'll see on the other side as well, there's more of that uh, kind of dab of paint. Uh, you'll see, for example, a dab of paint over here, even in the dipstick, to confirm that oil was filled correctly and they checked to make sure that this is the proper one. Uh, and uh, you'll see more down there, which you can't see on the camera, uh, so I can't quite show you that. But throughout the uh, engine compartment, there's a whole bunch of little dab of paint, which is all an indication of the fact that the operator installed it checked it and made sure everything was done to the spec before it's passed on to the next station. Now each of the manufacturing location within the tire factory has their own checks and balances, but it's interesting that for the 4Runner line, which does include the Lexus GX and the Land Cruiser Prado also being built on the same line, they have a checks and balances on every single station. So every time they install something, the operator does a quick check and then it's passed on to the next station. Something that they can't do as much of it nowadays because there's so much focus on cost reduction and speeding up everything that they have eliminated or reduced some of those double checking or duplication of the inspection. So these are some of the interesting things to point out under the hood. Uh, uh, so let me continue to walk around here. You, even these rubber strips, if you look at it, the thickness of the rubber strip here, for example, is thicker than some of the modern vehicles. Uh, even these plastic pieces, uh, the thickness of these covers and so forth, uh, all different than modern vehicle. Everything has been shrunken has been thinned out and they're smaller and lighter in the new models. Lighter the material, obviously it's better fuel efficiency, so car manufacturer will continue to do that. Uh, even headlight, you can see the thickness of the plastic if you look at the edge here, and if you look at the design of headlight, which is outdated now because newer headlights is smaller, uh, very robust. If you hit something in the parking lot, there's less likelihood of this one breaking than on the new modern vehicles. Okay, so let me close the hood and show you more things about the 4Runner that's a little bit different from other models. Further emphasizing the fact that this thing is the best built car in the world. And you know what, this thing will last forever if you take care of it. So if you come over here, uh, even the uh, wheels. So I have been to a number of uh, Toyota factories that actually produce these aluminum wheels. It's a simpler process than manufacturing the car, of course. Uh, but you know what? They don't make wheels like this anymore. This is super thick. You can see each of the elements of the spokes are thicker. Uh, and uh, obviously that makes the whole wheel a little bit heavier, which is not what you want in terms of fuel efficiency uh, or improving the handling, but for off-road capability and long-term durability, thicker and bigger and fatter the wheels, the better, because uh, there's so much more density there. So you can see on this particular one, which is a 4Runner Limited, uh, you can tell the design is an older design, but it's very robust and you can hit the potholes or go over big bumps fast and you just won't bend these wheels. Compared to newer ones that has much lighter spoke and a lot more space between the spoke and uh, if you hit the big pothole, they're going to bend those rims. Once again, it's to reduce the amount of aluminum being used to manufacture the wheels and obviously to make everything lighter. Even if you were to look inside here, such as these uh, covers that they have, this is to protect the, uh, the whole inside of the body and to avoid having rocks and other debris to kick into the inside. The thickness of these liners are about 20% thicker than uh, newer models. 
uh, because uh, once again, back in those days, we weren't too worried about weight and lightness and thickness and material supply. So everything was a lot thicker. Okay, let's keep on walking over here. And I already pointed out about the body finish and alignment in the first video, so I won't talk about that now. Uh, but I will re-emphasize the fact that the paint thickness and the, uh, also the clear coat applied on the Forerunner is at least 10% thicker than, let's say, uh, Toyota Highlander or Crown, which is a newer model, because uh, the paint finish on this one is, was designed a decade ago. And even though they do try to reduce the amount of paint each year to try to shrink the cost and the weight, they haven't done too much of that in the Forerunner simply because they can't adjust everything every year. So the paint continued to be a little bit thicker than normal. The, you can really tell the clear coat if you look at an angle. There's a little bit more clear coat, at least 10% thicker than most modern Toyota cars. Even the uh, something like this, which only comes in uh, Forerunner Limited, this one, you can tell the robustness, the thickness of the aluminum and just the pure design. I'm an engineer, as you know, by trade. And you know what, back in the old days, we would design something like this, and the plastic pieces here, the plastic pieces here are super thick. And so when you step on it, it's super, super solid. Uh, nowadays, these aluminum are a lot thinner. And in fact, the plastic itself that goes on top of the aluminum is also thinner. And when you step on it, it doesn't feel the same. So those are another reason why it feels different. Uh, something as simple as just walking into the Forerunner. Um, you know what, I can keep on talking here forever, but uh, even the emblems are thicker and also a little bit stronger than in the newer models. And this is an older design in terms of the um, roof rack and also same thing, super big and thick. And the total weight that you can put on this will be you know, at least 20% more than many of the ones that we have in the newer Toyotas because the entire uh, roof rack have been thinned out. Although I'm encouraged by seeing the Toyota Sequoia that has a flat kind of heavy duty type roof rack with uh, additional capacity for weight. So perhaps they will keep the ruggedness of the roof rack in the new Forerunner when it comes out. Um, going back here, you can see, oh, let me show you the uh, liner in the back as well. You can see the, how thick the liner is. Look at that. It's about maybe two to three millimeter thick over here. Uh, on the new models, this is super thin. In fact, it's so thin that if you were to put the big wheels and tires, you can just literally use your hand and bend it in. You can't do that on the Forerunner because this thing is so thick. Um, even the frames are thicker than before. So the actual thickness of the materials that they use to bend it to create the frames are quite a bit thicker on the Forerunner than the newer models. Uh, although I do admit that they're using newer designs in the, for example, in the Tundra, which is a different type of process altogether for manufacturing. So that's not necessarily a bad thing on the new models, but still you can't beat the uh, fact that these ones with the older design have a really strong, rugged frame just because it's more materials used in there. Uh, continuing in the back, same thing in terms of the uh, rear old tail lamp. Again, the plastic are the thicker. You can actually tell by looking at the edge here how thick it is. And also because they have been manufacturing these for a long time by a tier two supplier, uh, these would have been absolutely 100% well made, not a speck of dust or problem throughout. And sure, it looks outdated, but it's super solid. Otherwise, in the rear, there's still some controversy about the uh, actual window that rolled down for the fifth gen. Um, a lot of us really like that. I'm predicting that it's going to go away for sixth gen. Who knows? We're not quite sure about that. But if you 100% want to have the roll down window, you definitely want to buy the fifth gen and not uh, sixth gen just because this might go away as they have removed it for the Sequoia moving to a new platform. So that's my suspicion that they'll take it away to cut costs and to simplify the engineering and manufacturing. What else can I show you? Well, look at the corner of this uh, panel, for example. You can see the thickness of the paint and the clear coat, but also thickness of the metal that I mentioned earlier. It's really robust. When you open this uh, rear tailgate, it's heavy and cumbersome. Super solid. It's just have that almost a Mercedes G-Wagon or Land Rover Defender feel, not the current Defender, but the older one, because everything is just absolutely well made and uh, it's using thicker materials that most companies don't use anymore.
even this one you can tell also the thickness of the plastic all that stuff is absolutely amazingly well made and that's why there's zero defect with the 4Runner when it comes off the assembly now now let's take a look inside and show you a little bit more so now I'm inside my 4Runner and I can continue to talk about the same theme which is that on the current 4Runner the materials are thick it's the engineer and designed to last a very long time unlike the newer models you can tell by the thickness of the uh, material here for example it's uh, a bit thicker than the modern one and I've seen many older 4Runners 10, 12 years old with 200, 300k and the seat looks brand new, it doesn't, it doesn't wear out. Uh, this is actually a soft text which is not leather and yet it's as durable or sometimes more durable than leather and I've never had uh, any issues with any of the seats just because the material is thick and the stitching is really well done. Mainly because this is built in Tara factory and therefore the seats are done by the supplier but they're supplier to Tara factory so the quality is the same as the Lexus quality so you're getting a bit of a bargain priced uh, SUV here. You are buying a Toyota 4Runner at a 4Runner price, but you're getting the quality of the Lexus uh, GX, the same supplier, same manufacturer, and so forth. So it's a really huge advantage to buy this one. Now, if you look up in the roof here, the actual headliner is also very different design than the newer models, because this thing is super thick. You can actually feel the uh, thickness of it. Like you can actually push it in and makes absolutely no noise. If you do that on my Toyota Tundra or Tacoma, which is built in North America, when you press it in, it makes a bit of a noise because the, uh, the adhesives are a little bit thinner and the materials are thinner, and so they move quite a bit, but not on the Forerunner. Look how thick it is. And the design is very different because the actual felt or material that goes into it, it curves around here, and there's an extra deadening or extra uh, sound deadening materials inside between here and the actual roof and nowadays you don't have as much of it that's why they're a lot thinner and this one you can tell is really thick the same story carries even to the sun visor here so you can just measure the thickness this is about an inch thick all the newer models are about three quarter of an inch thick and so therefore as a difference in terms of material just a difference in approach in engineering and manufacturing uh, if you look at the door here for example the door is heavy because it's steel it's not aluminum. Most modern SUV uses aluminum outer skin with some steel components inside for reinforcement. This is solid metal and so it's heavier uh, and each of these materials are also thicker as well. You can tell the plastic is quite a bit thicker than normal but you get that super solid thunk when you close it because even the actual door uh, moldings are thicker and it has that really solid feel. Sort of like uh, again Mercedes G-Wagon if you want to think of it that way in terms of the quality of the engineering and the manufacturing and materials management is absolutely first class. It's something that I truly appreciate about the Forerunner because of this approach to engineering and manufacturing using old-fashioned method that's proven and reliable and solid uh, and it gives you that feel that no other SUV does because most other SUV just doesn't have the same rugged feel unless you buy something super expensive like the G-Wagon. Now let's take a look at the dash panel and let me tell you a few more things. For those of you who want a modernized interior, I know this is a bit of a joke. We got a small panel here, no digital cluster and so forth. But look at the quality of the fit and finish and the materials. Even this column area here is solid plastic composite. Most of the uh, cars these days have a really flimsy plastic or sometimes no plastic at all and just a vinyl there. This one is still pretty solid. Same goes with the thickness of the dash. You can actually feel the thickness and you can literally push it in a little bit because the type of plastic they use here are not the same as what they're using in the modern vehicles because they're trying to make it lighter and lighter. So the mixture of the composite they use for plastic has been changing in terms of chemistry over the last several years and it doesn't feel quite the same. There's lots of cheaper, light, hard plastic using modern uh, SUV and modern Toyota cars and that's why they don't quite look the same and they don't feel the same and oftentimes even in something like a Toyota Tundra that I own I hear some squeaks and rattles just because the material kind of gives in over time but not in this Forerunner, no way because each of these materials are thick has been designed for a long time using a proven supplier that also provides components for Lexus so yep everything looks old-fashioned and big and clunky but nothing ever goes wrong the entire dash panel comes as a one piece by the way in a tara factory 
but it's done by a professional who's truly experienced in the manufacturing process. Uh, so yes, the modernization of the interior is needed for next generation foreigner, but it could also introduce squeaks and rattles and the feel will change simply because the approach to materials management have changed over the years. The last thing I want to point out to you is the fact that this one is still using hydraulic steering. Almost 99%, maybe even 99.5% of cars out there do not use hydraulic assisted power steering because it uses up gas. As much as 2 to 3% of fuel efficiency is exhausted or used up when you use hydraulic power steering compared to electric power steering, which is a modern approach to engineering. Also, some of the newer technologies such as the steering vibrating to let you know that you've deviated from your uh, actual lane, that kind of stuff is not possible with the hydraulic steering. So uh, almost every manufacturer is moving to that and the new generation foreigner will certainly be using electric power steering or EPS. But because of the fact that this one is still hydraulic, it has that very rock solid feel. You have a lot more feedback from the road to your hands and it's actually a little bit heavier and it just feels right into your hands compared to almost every car out there that just cannot replicate the feel. Now it's interesting to note that Lexus LX, which is a new model now, uses EPS or electric power steering, but the Land Cruiser 300 series, which is also all new, actually kept the hydraulic power steering. What does that tell you? Well, Land Cruiser 300 is sold throughout the Middle East and elsewhere, where they really want ruggedness and total reliability, and they decide to keep the hydraulic because it provides a better feel in terms of steering, but also over a long time, it's probably more reliable than electric power steering. That's the last piece of puzzle that explains why the Forerunner feels so different on the road, uh, plus the fact that this is a true body on frame design with a robust and a thick frame underneath and that's why this thing feels absolutely solid and capable in any kind of conditions. So those are um, all the things I want to point out. There's probably a lot more I can show you again if you're interested. So let me know in the comments below if you want to know more about 5th gen 4Runner and why this thing is the best SUV in the world. And if you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe, that will be truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.